Hey, what's happening guys and welcome to this very special edition of the Main Event Talk right here as it's happening on Facebook Live. We are possibly an hour away from WWE Fastlane taking place live on pay-per-view and on the WWE Network. It's going to be an amazing event to check out. We are on the Fastlane to WrestleMania 32. And before the main event goes ahead and speak, uh, uh, I want to mention a few things. Um, there have been some people asking me about uh, when am I going to have an opportunity to put out a YouTube, uh, another main event talk on YouTube. Well, as I'm doing this right now, I'm going to not only post this, uh, well, I'm posting this live as it happens on Facebook, but I'm also going to try and post this as it happens on YouTube, you know, because it's been a long time since the main event has done a, uh, a YouTube, uh, a main event talk on YouTube, and now the main event gets an opportunity to do it this week. So before the main event decides to go ahead, before the main event decides to go ahead and start mentioning Fastlane, giving you my thoughts and everything else like that, I want to give a big shout out to um, one of my longtime best friends who uh, who last night was with me, and uh, I'm really really glad that he was there with me throughout this entire time, and uh, just want to give a big shout out to my longtime best friend, Homestar Runner. Hector Juarez, who is also the lead singer for the for the group of Serpents and Saviors, alongside with Jeremy, the best drummer on the planet, John Luna, uh, Matt Gungora. Uh, let's see. I keep I keep forgetting who's in the band, but there's there's a few members. But I, you know, if I don't mention your name, I'm sorry. I apologize to that. But anyways, as you guys know, they were supposed to have been on a show this past uh, Thursday with Havoc and Children of Bodom, but apparently, you know, uh, I understand uh, a few things went down and it didn't go so well. But luckily, uh, our good friends, my good friends, their good friend Shattered Son are going to be able to have them at the House of Rock coming up in about I believe next week or in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's going to be great to see uh, Shattered Sun when they uh, come over to the House of Rock and everything else like that. Big shout out to Marcus Leal, his girlfriend Michelle, and to all the members of Shattered Sun that are probably watching this as well. What's going on, guys? How's it rolling? Now, big thank you to Hector because last night, um, you know, and I also want to give a big shout out to Theos as well. It's been a long, long time since I went to Theos. And last week was Valentine's Day, and last week I wanted to you know, be there at Theo's, not just for my anniversary, well, not just for Valentine's Day, but for my anniversary. Because anybody that knows me knows that it's been over 13 years since I've been going to Theo's. That has always been my place. That will always be the spot for the main event, no matter what. I love going in that place, and I'll tell you, and right now, uh, going to watch. Where are you going to watch? Uh, oh, uh, good question. Um, just to let you know, Hector, uh, I am thinking about wanting to watch it at the house because my brother ordered it, but I was also thinking maybe I can stop by your house or, or maybe you can come by and pick me up. Maybe we can go watch it together at your, you know, your house and everything else like that, WWE Fastlane. But uh, Hector, I just want to say thank you a lot for last night. You know, I, I needed to get out of the house. I had a lot that was on my mind, and I know you had a lot in your mind. And uh, it was also good to see Lita there as well. Or Sasha Banks, if you will. I'm talking about Roxanne. And it was really, really, really good. And um, just to kind of give everyone an idea, you know, um, when I go to Theo's, I don't go to Theo's just to drink and, uh, you, know, so, you know, drink out my problems and everything else like that. I always like to have a good time and, and try not to think about the things that have happened to me within the past couple of days or the past couple of weeks, you know, because sometimes... You leave the house, you go somewhere, you go to, say, Theo's, or go to House of Rock, or go something, you know, just clear your mind off a bunch of fucking bullshit that you go through, and when that happens, you come to Theo's, you come to whatever place you want to, and you drink your problems away, and then also, when you run into a couple of friends that have been there for you for a long time, you pour out to them, they pour out to you, you make a conversation happen, you make everything, you know, feel good, and before you know it, you're all having a good time, you're all drinking, everything's cool, Woody! <laughs> hey, Woody, what's going on, my man? Um, 
Yeah, everyone always likes to drink away problems and everything else like that. And uh, Hector, thank you very much for drinking with me. Thank you very much for coming over to the house. And I'm, I'm really glad that I had uh, whatever bodily Jaeger I had left over at my house and everything else like that. Which, by the way, I'm going to have to buy me another one. And I'm also going to have to buy me a fireball when I have the opportunity. So thank you very much. And as far as my problem, just to kind of give you a little hint... I had a text message uh, earlier today and I, I really didn't respond back to the message. Even though I, I still love this person and I still care about this person, I'm still a little bit hurt. And it's one of those things where, you know, now's not really a good time to talk. Now's not really, you know, any, you know, any time when I get hurt or any time when you get hurt by somebody that you care about a whole lot. You do, you know, you do intend to go back. You do intend to go back to the person no matter what. But because that's how it goes. That is how it always goes. You know how you say, fuck that person, fuck that bitch, fuck that asshole and all that shit. But yet a couple of days later, you end up going back to that same person that you told that, you know, you don't want to be around. We've all gone through it. Hell, I've gone through it many, many times. And I've never been in a relationship. It's true. I've never been in a relationship. Not one relationship. Although I was involved with one person. Not, not like in a relationship type, but I was with, uh, with someone that I was intimate with. And long story short, yes, I did have sex with her, okay? Just to be honest, all right? I don't want to mention who. I think Hector will probably tell you, but I don't want to mention who. So once again, thank you very much, Hector, for, uh, for last night. And hopefully we can do this again very, very soon. And hopefully when the main event gets his ride... When the main event starts riding in another Mustang or in another car, we're going to Theo's again. And if we have to take Lita, Roxanne if you will, along for the ride, we will. Even if we have to take, and I was thinking about him earlier, even if we have to bring Adrian along for the ride. Adrian, if you're watching this, hey, what's going on, my man? And I'm not just talking about Adrian Rodriguez, I'm also talking about another good friend of mine who's also a big time wrestling fan as well. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but, you know, Adrian has seen many of my main event talks that have happened here on Facebook and everything else like that. Big shout out to you. And hey, hopefully, ah, look who decided to join in. The best drummer on the planet, John Luna. Yes, I said it. Live as it happens on Facebook. And here's the thing. There's a lot of great drummers in Corpus Christi, a lot of them. The greatest drummer of them all will always be Rene Hernandez, a.k.a. Bullwinkle. He is one of the greatest drummers of all time here in Corpus Christi. That's my opinion. That's how it goes. And John Luna is definitely one of the best drummers on the planet. And if you're going to challenge him, I, the main event player, the Super C, the member of Team Headbanger Incorporated, is going to tell you straight to your face, you want the best drummer on the planet, you take on John Luna. You bring on whoever you want. And I'll tell you this. John Luna, without a shadow of a doubt, is the Dave Lombardo of Corpus Christi. That is how I see it. You don't like it? You challenge John Luna. You challenge John Lu Well, actually, you know what? You ha I had a name for you. I had a name for you. As a matter of fact, I think we talked about this about one year ago, as a matter of fact. John Luna will be known as... Luna Bon Jovi. Remember that? I can almost hear that song from uh, from um, from Bon Jovi. Remember, remember that song that you put together and you know, shot to the heart and you're to blame God and you gave love a bad name. And there's John Luna coming down the aisle with his drumsticks and everything else like that, just going like this and everything else like that, carrying his mail suit on for some odd reason. But anyways, <laughs> thank you very much for watching this. And uh, well, what 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 am I doing? Um, what, what am I talking? Oh, I forgot. Here I am talking about all my problems and everything else I, uh, that took place last night and everything else like that when we haven't had an opportunity to talk about WWE Fastlane taking place tonight on pay-per-view and on the WWE Network. So let the main event get out everything he needs to say right here on this episode. And by the way, like I said earlier, this is going to be, this is shown on Facebook right now, but it'll also be posted on YouTube as it happens as well. So the main event's gonna make sure that I get my main event talks in when I can. So let's talk about WWE Fastlane. We're on the fast lane, the fast track, the race to WrestleMania, if you will. Now, all of us can agree when I say, I think we should have eliminated Fastlane and brought back the Elimination Chamber. Because as you guys know, the Elimination Chamber 
was always the event before WrestleMania. You step into the chamber, you take on the WWE champion or whoever, and then whoever the champion was would go on to WrestleMania and defend the championship against the number one contender of the Royal Rumble. But now all that has changed. Triple H is now the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and now he is on his way to WrestleMania to defend the championship. Now, the triple threat match we all know is going to take place between Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns. Now, let me give you my opinion. Me and Hector were talking about this earlier. Uh, well, yesterday, last night, as a matter of fact. Um, I think we both feel that Dean Ambrose should, should win and move on to WrestleMania. Because John, uh, I'm not John, I'm, I, I can't, why am I thinking of John Luna? I don't know. What the hell? God damn, you are that good. But anyways, um, Roman Reigns and Triple H going one-on-one -on -one for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania is just too obvious. It's way, way too obvious. I mean, come on. Everyone already saw the setup the moment Roman Reigns speared Triple H at WWE TLC about a couple of months ago. Okay? Then he wins the championship, and then he loses it to Triple H, and you know how this is going to go. Roman Reigns is going to take on Triple H at WrestleMania. That's gonna As a matter of fact, uh, looks like, um, yeah, my WWE amp is on right now. I can see it right there in front of me. And it looks like the kickoff show is about to begin. So if anyone has the WWE Network right now, you can see it as it happens on your WWE app. And you can also see it on YouTube as well. So if you guys get an opportunity to check out Fastlane, go to YouTube or go to the WWE app and check out the kickoff show as it's happening right now. I don't want to really bore anybody with anything I have to say, but let me just get it out. Triple H versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, too obvious. Dean Ambrose versus Triple H, that would be a better match, and it would also be cool to see Dean Ambrose win the title. But also, I also think that there's a lot of people that want to see Dean Ambrose just turn heel. They want it to happen. But to me personally, I don't think Dean Ambrose should turn heel just yet. It doesn't need to happen. I think Dean Ambrose needs to turn heel after WrestleMania. After WrestleMania, because it would make a lot of sense. It would work, and I think the audience would probably do will probably turn on Dean Ambrose if they can. But you know, Dean Ambrose, as as me and Hector talked about the other night, he's he's an anti-hero. He's not really like you know he's one of those heroes like like Stone Cold Steve Austin or or like The Rock or The Undertaker. Hell, you'll love you'll you'll love this guy no matter what. But it, it, you know, even if he turns heel, you'll still like the guy. That's that's the way it goes and everything else like that. Now, as far as Brock Lesnar goes, I mean every. Anybody can see that Brock Lesnar is not going to win, even though the Beast Incarnate is the man that's going to be able to take Roman Reigns and take Dean Ambrose. We know Brock Lesnar is not going to win. In my opinion, anybody that sees this, I mean, some people have been posting that Bray Wyatt is going to go one-on-one -on -one against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. But in my opinion, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. I mean, think about this. Bray Wyatt against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32 do you really want to see that match? Nah, you know why? Because you're just going to sit back, relax, just watch this and say, what the fuck did I just see? This dude gets his ass kicked by the beast incarnate, Brock Lesnar. And yet you want him to face off against Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania? Nah, 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 nah. You got to make it interesting. You got to make it good. How good? Let me tell you exactly how good. You put Brock Lesnar in a match at WrestleMania. You do put him against Bray Wyatt, but how about you put him up against all three members of the Wyatt family? Think about it. Think of the scenario. Imagine this in your mind, if you will. Brock Lesnar against Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, and Braun Strowman. Think about that. you got three huge monsters, three of them, against a beast. And to me personally... That's a match to sell. That's a match to work. And here's, here's an added stipulation. Here's something I think you all will agree upon. If Brock Lesnar wins up against those three guys, up against, you know, the, the three big monsters, then you put Bray Wyatt in there against the Beast Incarnate for five minutes. In other words, if, you know, like I said, if Bray Wyatt loses or if they lose against Brock Lesnar, you put... Bray Wyatt against Brock Lesnar in five minutes, and you send that son of a bitch to Suplex City. That works. So expect this at Fastlane. Obviously, we're going to see. Uh, obviously, we're going to see Roman Reigns win the triple threat match. It's going to happen. You see it. 
But if Dean Ambrose wins, then that would make a whole lot of sense, and WrestleMania will be extremely excited to watch. As far as Brock Lesnar goes, I expect the Wyatt family to show up, and I expect them to interfere in Brock Lesnar's match. It's going to happen. You wait and see. Nobody's talking about it yet because no one's been able to figure it out. But I have. Because I don't go by wrestling insiders. I don't go by stupid predictions that they think are right. I've always been right. When you've been the biggest wrestling fan for over 30 years, that's right, 30 years, you begin to understand the reality and the fantasy of the business, and you begin to understand how the storylines go. Expect this to happen at Fastlane tonight. Let's talk about the Intercontinental Championship. Let's talk about Kevin Owens against Dolph Ziggler. Now, here's the thing. My opinion is this. Kevin Owens will win again and will hold on to the title again. Even though a lot of people do want to see Dolph Ziggler become the man to beat Kevin Owens and win the Intercontinental Championship again, I think Dolph Ziggler just needs to stay away from the Intercontinental title because he's already won that title about I don't know how many times. It'd be best to put Dolph Ziggler at the very top of the WWE. We need to see him become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. That needs to happen this year. You can't pull back Dolph Ziggler any longer. You got to bring him in. Where, where are you watching? Like I said, I may watch it at my house because my brother ordered the pay-per-view. But I wouldn't mind if I come to your house, Hector, and see it. But I'll give you, I'll give you a final decision after today. Okay, after this. But anyways... Dolph Ziggler against Kevin Owens. I say Kevin Owens is going to win it. I say he holds on to the championship. But there's more. Let's talk about AJ Styles. My man. The phenomenal one. AJ Styles go one-on-one -on -one against Y2J Chris Jericho. Now, he's been someone that I've wanted to see in the WWE for a long, long time. And I know all of you have wanted to see Y2J Chris Jericho go one-on-one -on -one against AJ Styles. The first time was on Raw. He won. Second time, SmackDown. Chris Jericho won. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little bit congested right now. And also, the third and final matchup, obviously we all know, obviously we all know that AJ Styles was going to take on Y2J at WWE Fastlane. It was too obvious, it happened, and now I can't wait, and I know you guys can't wait, to see Y2J Chris Jericho go one-on-one -on -one against AJ Styles, and I say match number three will be phenomenal, and it'll be so fucking awesome, and everyone's going to be talking about it, and I mentioned something about Kevin Owens, and I was talking about this with Hector. Imagine this, if you will, imagine this. Kevin Owens defending the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania against the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Think about it. You've already got all of these great matches that are going to take place at WrestleMania. Why not add an Intercontinental matchup? Why not put Kevin Owens, a former Ring of Honor champion, a former NXT champion, going up against Mr. TNA? The phenomenal one, television champion, NWA World Heavyweight Champion, tag team champion. <sighs> Sorry, I'm trying hard not to, you know. <laughs> but he's held on to every championship, but now it'll be great to see the phenomenal AJ Styles to win the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. They got to set up that storyline. They need to put it together one way or another. So, I predict Kevin Owens will win against Dolph Ziggler, and AJ Styles will win over Y2J. Now, let's talk, hmm, hmm, sorry, I'm, you know how you feel a need to just say something and you can't put it out in words and everything else like that? This is live, okay? I do what I want when I want to do it. But anyways, Let's talk about, um, ooh, sorry. 
<sighs> Let's talk about uh, Sasha Banks against um, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch against uh, against two of the members of what's left over of Team Bad. Um, and, and I'll be honest about that matchup right there. Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, they're going to win, obviously. And before you know it, they're both going to have their opportunity to face off against Charlotte at WrestleMania if that happens. And speaking of Charlotte, she is going to defend her Divas Championship against Brie Bella. And all I can say about that match is this. Everyone's talking about Brie Bella possibly retiring from the sport or, or not, you know, being in the WWE much longer to focus on, you know, anyone that's watched the Total Diva show should know what she's been focused on, you know, and that's pretty much what it is. So, I say Charlotte will hold on to the championship and she will beat Brie Bella at Fastlane. But, you know, to me, if they give her a run, if they decide to give, boy, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm <clears throat> yeah. It's one of those things where, and I'll be honest, when you've had too much to drink, when you feel like you have to, you know, do it. But in this case, I'm not going to. It's it's live, and I got to be careful <laughs> with what I do. But anyways, as far as uh, like I said, as far as fast lane goes, Charlotte will beat. Um, Brie Bella, but if they do give Brie Bella a chance at the Divas Championship, then give it to her. But the question is, will she defend the title at WrestleMania, or will Charlotte be the one to defend the title at WrestleMania? We'll all see what happens. So, uh, well, I don't know what else to talk about. Um, uh, I would talk about Kalisto against Alberto Del Rio. That's going to be a great matchup as well. It's going to be a two out of three falls match. It's going to take place at uh, WWE Fastlane. Um, I don't know why, but I kind of see I kind of see Alberto Del Rio winning the title again, but not really. You know, it's one of those things. And then also, uh, what what else is going to take place? Um, I'm trying to remember a few other matches that are going to take place at Fastlane. Uh, you know, I pretty much mentioned I pretty much mentioned everything, haven't I? You know, uh, the new day. Oh yes, the new day. I for, oh god, I forgot. Oh, Adrian, there you are. Hey, what's going on, dude? How's it rolling? And uh, what what am I talking about? Oh, AJ. Um, I, I keep mentioning AJ. I keep mentioning new day. And he meant blah, 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 blah. It's live, folks. Don't blame me. Anyways, the new day are are going to be appearing on Edge Edge and Christians. The Cutting Edge Peep Show during the whole um, during the whole day on uh, WWE Fastlane. I think, as a matter of fact, I think that's happening right now. I'm not sure, but I may have to look into that later on. So, guys, from here on out, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just you know, stop right there and everything else like that. Plus, I'm looking at my time here, and I only got a few more minutes until I end this uh, main event talk. But I will do another main event talk. Sorry. Once again, <laughs> I think it either. Mm. I am sorry. I'm re really, really sorry, guys. But I'm going to have to end it right here, right now, before I do something very, very stupid on live television. Well, actually, on live Facebook. But once again, guys, that's going to do it for this edition of the main event talk. I'm sorry. I've got to go. I've got to be ready. But don't forget, guys, WWE Fastlane is tonight. On pay-per-view and on the WWE Network and also be ready for my next main event talk or my main event uh, I think I actually I think I am gonna do a main event talk uh, live as it happens on Facebook after uh, WWE Fastlane so guys get ready go check it out live as it happens on pay-per-view and on the WWE Network and the main events got to get ready for everything and Hector I'll be giving you a text and a call in just a few minutes so be ready for that <sighs> don't forget to, oh, and I almost forgot one thing before I go ahead and go. I'm going to be posting this on my YouTube show, and it's going to appear there also, so be ready for that as well. We are on the road to WrestleMania going through Fastlane. That's how it goes. Why? Because I can and I want to. Any questions? Enough said.
Thank you very much for watching, guys.